Kevin. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening to all. Well, if you must know, today is my birthday. <laughs> Maybe because uh, I was there. Uh, I've been blogging about it. Some of you may, may have read my blog. I blog under the name The Ancient Mariner. Not so ancient, maybe now. <laughs> and uh, I left the port. I've been there for about 30 years. I joined the Clank Authority at the age of 25 in 1973. And in 1999, I went up uh, as a general manager of Westport. I took an early retirement. It was during bad times, 1999. I think the manager was very glad to see me go. And, uh, and that was about the same time this whole uh, Port Klang uh, official project started. I remember when I left in uh, 1999, Klang Port Authority, which at that time was one of the highest paying uh, tax, tax paying government agency next to uh, Petronas or whatever. Uh, the port had about 2.5 billion in ringgit in assets and about 500 billion in reserves. Because we all paid very low pay government service, so they managed to save up all this 500 billion. Imagine my shock and horror when I read this paper after a few years. The port could have found 5 billion, almost 5 billion, which is 4.6. You know, so I'd see my cousin keep my And, uh, I couldn't believe what was happening. I think uh, uh, maybe what was not ever mentioned is now. Even in 2003, the Auditor General's report had already sounded alarm bells. Now the question to be asked: Why was nothing done then? But the port went ahead and spent more and more money. You know, and uh, to talk about this, uh, even uh, this lack of transparency and and whatever. Only yesterday, I saw, I happened to see the letter of appointment of the Mega One. And would you believe it was only a single page letter, three sentences, like a blank check. There was no agreement. It was just a letter by the general manager. That's it. And then the to come up with 147 million bills for corporate advisory services, which took only about 18 months old. Mana are Anyway, when I left, I remember the port then had master plans and all that. Right? And I think uh, because of this uh, euphoria, we were making a lot of money in the port plan this soon, everybody forget about a master plan for the port. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> then then, they, then it makes me look like a karaoke singer now. <laughs> We talk about fiduciary uh, responsibilities and duties. I have to look up the word in the dictionary. Something about you know, the moral and whatever responsibilities, which is lacking in the, in the spot after I left. Uh, really, really very painful for me, actually. Uh, for now, I believe a lot of my former colleagues, young former colleagues in the port, they were forced to do things uh, against their principles. Uh, some have to sign checks. If the head of the department refuses to do it, then the second, the second one uh, is uh, second in command, whatever. And then the, the, the reason given by the top is the officers of you and me, and that's that, you know. And a few had to resign. And you know, in the government service, when you resign, you lose all your pension benefits and other benefits. 
this is happening there. So when the question comes whether we do close the port, make it to a new port, uh, new port client authority is suggested by YD, Tony, maybe we have to really think about these few people, you know. They were forced to, to do things like this and then they, they are the ones who are suffering right now. And they, are, they, are, they, have, have, they should have all our sympathy. Now, the details have already, the, the history, you know, the, what goes on uh, right from uh, start in 1999 and until the final disclosure this year by the Pricewaterhouse report. But uh, I've been blogging about it for the past two years, I've been way more long, you know, I'm talking about it. And uh, a lot of things have come out and they have not been able to explain. But no explanation has been forthcoming, and I, I believe even the, in today's The Sun, uh, this uh, well-known uh, journalist, citizen Nate, named, named all the names of the Port Clanging Authority directors who have been involved. We have had people who are directors of both the Port Clanging Resource and Product and also the Port Clanging Authority. They cannot, for any good measure, say that they didn't know what was happening. But I believe that is the, the, the answer they are going to give when they are being, you know, being asked this question. And I think uh, we should not be able to, to, to not accept it. Some of the points I've already mentioned in my blog, for example, there is, there is a dispute and some quantity, uh, independent quantity, severe so survey. There is a beautiful four star hotel there in the middle of the jungle. Yeah? The contractors claim that it cost 90 million, but independent surveyors have said this only cost half that amount. Huh? And uh, but who are the contractors? Quality Dimensi, as mentioned in town. The other point is uh, decided that right now, Tanaga National is one of the significant. Tanaga National is in dispute with Port Authority over the building of an electrical substation. I don't know, X dollar, X million dollars, but the Tanaka has refused to, uh, to accept this because they say they are able to cooperate because they say it should cost less than half what is, what is being offered. So all this, I've been asking what is happening here, you know. A lot of this somehow never come out. And uh, the answers given by the present board of uh, our directors and Port Clang Authority, they didn't know what was happening. They are all brand new and uh, like, uh, like uh, as mentioned by the speakers and now, a lot of the chairmen are now professional professor to know what has been happening. So, if you ask me again, will heads roll? I, you know, like I was talking to when we live then maybe we should change the government, then only heads will roll. <laughs> I'm to have this, uh, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, uh, front page of line in the sun, one of the newspapers, Port Clang Zone, Port Clang uh, PKFZ, is a disaster zone. A bit harsh in my mind, but to my mind, the real disaster will happen only when the powers that be uh, let the perpetrators of this heinous crime go unpunished. With that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much.